work helps us on the spiritual level, besides all the physical medicine that we can, you know, get into, but on the spiritual level, oak really helps us to find that stillness and rooted, centered place to stand strong and or to know when to when to fall. Hello and welcome to the Herbs with Rosalie podcast, a show exploring how herbs heal as medicine, as food, and through nature connection. I'm your host, Rosalie de la Forêt. I created this YouTube channel to share trusted herbal wisdom so that you can get the best results when relying on herbs for your health. I love offering up practical knowledge to help you dive deeper into the world of medicinal plants and seasonal living. Each episode of the Herbs with Rosalie podcast is shared on YouTube as well as your favorite podcast app. Transcripts and recipes for each episode can be found at herbswithrosaliepodcast.com or through the link in the video description. Also in the video description, you'll find other helpful resources. For example, to get my best herbal tips, as well as fun bonuses, be sure to sign up for my weekly herbal newsletter. Okay, grab your cup of tea and let's dive in. Well, I'm delighted to have Robin back on the podcast. Her first episode with Peach in the summer of 2022 was such a big hit, and I still have people commenting on her peach oxymel recipe. Now Robin is back with a new book and some powerful words of wisdom about the ancient oak. For those of you who don't know her already, Robin Rose Bennett is a storyteller, writer, and herbalist, offering classes in herbal medicine and earth spirit teaching since 1986 at herb conferences, festivals, medical schools, and most joyously, outside with the plants. Robin Rose shares herbal medicine with gratitude for the loving generosity of plants and the magic, mystery, and beauty of the web of life. She is the author of Healing Magic, a Green Witch Guidebook to Conscious Living, The Gift of Healing Herbs, Plant Medicines and Home Remedies for a Vibrantly Healthy Life, and A Green Witch's Pocket Book of Wisdom, Big Little Life Tips. Well, Robin, welcome back to the show. Thanks, Rosalie. It's so good to be here with you. Absolutely. I've had very few people come as a repeat on the show. And when I heard that you wanted to be back, I'm so excited. I've been looking forward to this for weeks and especially this morning because for me, I get to hang out with you. So that's very fun. I'm honored and delighted. Oh, wonderful. Well, we were talking a little bit before we started here officially about how to start because normally ask you about your path and what led you to being an herbalist. And of course, you shared that before with us on the peach episode. And you were telling me that you have another story you could tell us about the coming of Robin. So I would love to hear that. (laughs) Yes, like all herbalists, I have many stories. But this one goes back to before I was even an herbal student. Mm -hmm. And I was living, I was going to school in University of California, Santa Cruz. And I was looking for help with um, periodontal problems that I had had since I was really, really little. And I don't think I told this story on the on the Peach podcast. I hope not. But the reason I chose it today is because we will be talking about the mighty oak. Mm-hmm. And that was the herb. So I went to my first herbalist. Like, I'll never forget it. I, I don't remember his name, but I remember like, you know, I barely knew what an herbalist was, right? This is in the 70s. And um, and I'm from the East Coast coming to the West Coast. And and he recommended that I use white oak bark, um, which he sent me to the herb store to get in a little packet of powdered, you know, of powdered herbs. And I tried to drink it and I could not. I could not drink it. So we will talk about you know, the importance of forms in which we um, take in our herbs, right? Uh, But I didn't know that yet. And so I just kind of was like, oh, no, no, I can't do this. However, I remember how I felt being listened to. And that herbalist listened to me in a way that I had never had a practitioner listen to me before. And um, that is certainly the heart of my own practice now is listening, right? Listening mm-hmm. to the person who's come in in their vulnerability and trust, um, sometimes with a you know familiarity with herbal medicine and sometimes with no idea they're there because somebody suggested this to them. 
So anyway, so oak was actually in that sense, my very first herb. Wow. Oh, there's so much goodness there. I want to ask you about first, Robin, I don't know if you'll remember, but do you remember what inspired you to see an herbalist? Desperation. Desperation. <laughs> as yeah, unfortunately, as still often happens, right? Where does, yeah. right, you and I know that the best thing that can happen is for people to come to an herbalist early in the stage of any problem, of any challenge. But as we are still on the edge of accepted, you know, forms of medicine, right? Of of um of healing, I should say, um, often we're the last, we're the last stop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we do remarkably well, all things considered, right? Considering that truth. Um, but yeah, I was, there were no answers uh, to the level of bone loss I was experiencing. And I am certain that if I hadn't discovered herbs and herbal medicine, that that would have continued throughout my entire body, not just my mouth, which brought me there in the first mm -hmm. place. Um, and so I am, you know, to say I'm grateful to herbs is pretty much the hugest understatement possible because um, besides finding my own life path, um, which was to marry the spiritual path I was already on with being a human being in a body, which my original spiritual path didn't necessarily think was the greatest thing, right? But my herbalist self um, brought that home to here and now and how I lived my life and my relationships and so on. So that it's invaluable. And also by and large, almost every side effect from the herbs tends to be something positive and beneficial. Like for me, herbal herbalism is very much a spiritual path. It's not a strictly physical clinical path. It's just who I am. And so the first thing that deserves um, absolutely honoring and mentioning is, and I know you know this, Rosalie, is it because I see it's how you relate as well to herbs and herbal medicine, is, is the opening the door to absolute kinship with everything and everyone in the web of life. And this is invaluable. This mm -hmm. is everything. This is everything. I mean, knowing yourself is everything. And then who you are in that web of kinship that makes life meaningful and juicy and rich and magical and healthier. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's so true, Robin. I feel like, you know, I often think to my early days of study, which had that sprinkled into it. But honestly, in my early days, I just thought it was pretty flipping cool. I could put plantain and chew it up and put it on a bee sting and have it get better. You know, that was kind of my entryway yep. um, into that. And then it just deepened from there. And definitely now, you know, it's decades in, it really is that transformative way of shifting a culture to see more of that kinship, to live in that kinship. Well, before we get too much further, I do want to just really highlight this because it was so important what you shared, that that first herbalist that you saw listened to you. And I love that that first herbalist, you don't remember his name, the herb didn't in that form didn't work for you in that situation, but it was still this profound experience for you because you were listened to. And I just think um, that's such a great reminder for all practitioners or just anybody who's present with people and plants. You just never know how you're going to influence somebody, but that was so much a part of your healing or at least putting you on this path. You're just being simply being listened to. I love that. So thanks for sharing that. Welcome. Yeah. Well, you chose oak. And I think we have a little bit of an idea of why you might have chose oak. It was a gateway plant for you. But I have no doubt that your kinship with oak has deepened over time. And I'd love to hear more about why you chose to bring in oak with us today. Okay. I'm delighted to. Um, yeah, Quercus, right? Oak in the Fabiaceae family, same family as beech trees, which I didn't know actually until I was doing a little extra homework for today. I didn't realize they were the same family. And it makes sense because they're both um, connected to, uh, well, oak is doer, right? In the Celtic, D-U-I-R, like a doorway made, I guess, probably the most well-known, like in a Druidic 
path, right? Every, every, all their rituals, right? Or in a grove of oaks because they're often considered a doorway to the inner worlds or the other world. So one of the reasons I chose oak is, uh, wow, this is really interesting. I just had to, I didn't have to, but I chose to um, kind of stop this immediate response I had, which was actually to burst into tears, very unexpected. Um, because I, I have, I chose Oak, I think, because I have been connecting with one particular ancient Oak uh, for the last few years, very specifically. I, I live um, basically right in, in the middle of an Oak forest. So I have many Oaks I love, but this one particular Oak is one that I've bonded with as a guardian tree and really a counselor, um, beloved uh, teacher being. And early, early in the, and it's it's in a church parking lot, right? It's not in the middle of some fabulous, like, um, you know, expansive ancient woodlands or anything. It's literally in a parking lot. Um, and uh, it is by some beautiful, um, uh, I guess, shrines and, and altars and things there that the church built. But anyway, I go to my oak and early in the pandemic, I started going. I think that was when I started. It might have even been before. But during the pandemic, height of pandemic, I should say, I went a lot and I asked for help. And I asked for medicine teachings and so forth. And one of the ones that this oak shared that I wanted to share with the people listening to us um, now and whenever you listen, right, through the magic of technology, was that this oak said to me one day, and I don't, I'll be honest, I don't remember the question I asked, but the answer was, Stand your ground, root in integrity, and rise in love. Mm -hmm. And so these messages that have been coming through this oak tree have been so profoundly helpful for me and for, I share it on podcasts or in classes uh, or with clients. Um, and sometimes I have to wait a while to quiet my mind. So, so I love the oak, you know, to be able to hear past my own thoughts, but oak also is a fantastic physical medicine. But if you ask why I chose, it's really because of this relationship with this one particular, particular oak. This oak is probably, I would guess, might be 300 years old. So I like oh, to- on the tip of my tongue to ask you that. <laughs> yeah. I see. I- you know, and I, when I think about what that oak has seen, right, if that oak was there since 1700, mm -hmm. right, and what was the air like then, and what was the, what, you know, there were no cars, there were no paved roads, like, like a whole part of this oak's roots have to be under that asphalt, right, under that, that parking lot, and fortunately, not a lot of cars park on that part, I'm really glad, and, you know, but the other part is under earth, at least, and there's a row in nearby, and a white pine nearby that I feel like they're all in, in relationship. Yeah. Yeah. There's just, there's this, um, Oak helps us on the spiritual level besides all the physical medicine that we can, you know, get into, but on the spiritual level, Oak really helps us to find that stillness and rooted centered place to stand strong, um, and, or to know when to, when to fall in the storms, right? Oaks fall in storms. So one thing that's always fascinated me about them that is not a physical medicine, but I, I don't know, what do you think of this? I, it's Oaks are so strong and they're really often associated with strength and endurance, right? And you know, we build things with oak, many things. And yet the roots are not deep. They're not deep rooted trees. They will fall in a storm where a pine will bend. So for me, the metaphor that I get from that is they're absolutely here, fully embodied, fully present and not attached. Hmm. And that's another potent message for us, you know, hmm. to be fully here 
and yet know when to let go, both in the big sense, you know, when it's time to actually leave our bodies, but in the everyday sense where we're always, you know, letting go and taking in and letting go and taking in even our physical bodies, right? The cells slough off and are replaced with new cells, whether we're talking bones or blood or tissue. So I get a lot of messages from Oak is, you know, is the truth. Hmm. That's interesting about the shallow roots. I didn't know that because I just assumed such a hard wood mm. with such a stout tree. Yeah. I just assumed it would have deep roots. It's very interesting. Let yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah. When you see one that has been felled in a storm, you look, look at the roots there. Don't, they're not so, um, it doesn't hold on that tightly, but then when an oak tree falls, it becomes shelter and food for like so many beings and, and, you know, um, yeah, every, everything keeps regenerating life. That's, you know, that's the other thing that working with the herbs has shown me and you and, and so many people, right. Everything leads to ongoing regeneration, which shifts how you live, right? Because at least for me, it's helped me trust life so much more than I did before I was in this kind of um, committed kinship relationship with the living planet. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And you mentioned oak as a, a physical, physical medicine. Yeah. What so are we some gifts of oak in that sense? Yeah, I was I was listening to a few people uh, this summer, um, sort of eavesdropping on their conversation at the local swimming hall recently, just a you know a little bit ago from now, a few months ago in the summer, and they were talking about how many acorns were falling to the earth, mm -hmm. and one guy said, "How about remember a couple of years ago we were literally taking them out and and getting rid of them by the wheelbarrow," and I thought. Oh, 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 right. So here's this major wild food that we have, right? And and there's that disconnect that we've all, most of us, I should say not all, but most of us have been brought up with. We take them by the wheelbarrow and throw them out, right? And so our indigenous friends are you know, drying them and leaching out the tan the excessive tannins and drying them to make everything, right? Breads and puddings and porridge, oh my, and this incredibly nutritious. I have some acorn flour I dried years ago that still is fresh and moth-free. And it's like, that speaks to the life force of this particular flour. And I think I was afraid to use acorns for the longest time because I thought it was hard. It's not hard. It just takes time. Mm -hmm. Basically, you're, you're gathering your acorn you're sitting it in, in water and leaching out tannins and giving the water back to the earth and then drying the acorn and powdering it, right? So it's really more that it takes time than that it's difficult. Mm -hmm. And um, But what I use primarily are the twigs and the leaves. Mm -hmm. And the twigs we really want to gather, and it's probably mainly the white oak, that is used, though I suspect we can use others, just like it's mainly the white willow that we use. But really, if you scratch a salix plant, a willow tree, you're going to smell that salicylic acid in all of them. So I've learned to use the so-called weeping willow. I like to call her flowing. But back to oak. So I suspect we have more medicinal oak options than we really um, make good use of. But the most famous is the white oak, the Quercus alba. And the white oak is kind of, well, here's how Michael Moore said it, um, famed Michael Moore of the Southwest, right now an ancestor, said, it's the astringent. <laughs> it's a the astringent. And I don't think it's used enough, right? Because for intestinal difficulties, including things like leaky gut, um, but especially known for things like just common diarrhea, but food poisoning, anything where we want to tighten and tone the tissue. Um, white oak bark is a great choice and it does give its properties to um, water and alcohol. So we can tincture white oak. We can, I tincture it in hundred proof vodka. I'm sure other herbalists tincture it in different things and in different parts of the world, 
you know, there all sorts of things are used to tincture medicine that are um, sometimes in our clinical arrogance, we consider inferior because it's not the quote right alcohol percentage and so forth. But when something is traditionally used, even let's say if it's a really low alcohol thing like wine or beer, if that's what your parents, grandparents, great grandparents, great greats all use for medicine and you're still using it, it's because it works, mm -hmm. right? So intention, I'm not discounting chemistry and science. I'm saying it's not all there is. Mm -hmm. That intention and relationship with the plant is a powerful part of the medicine, powerful part of the medicine. Mm -hmm. It changes everything really. Um, just the same way, and I'm going to come back to the specific in a second, but just the same way, like if you are with somebody and you pay back to the listening, you pay really close attention to them, you you look at them, you see them, you listen, you hear what they're saying, it brings out more of this person than if you're kind of half checking your phone or you're, you know, or you're thinking even, you're not doing it obvious, but you're just thinking about what's next, what you have to do, what you have to make for dinner, whatever. All right. So I'm not saying this is bad. I'm just saying it, it's a quality of attention brings out different aspects. And the same is true for our herbs. So, um, so back to the twigs and the leaves. So the twigs are the best known part. I mean, you hear about white oak bark but it's really the twig bark that we want. We don't want to be going to like a big old tree and, you know, pulling off big, like for people who are watching, I know a lot of people are, are just listening, but I'm just going to hold up like a, a, a piece of branch that fell in. It's been raining where I live. It's been raining for the past three or four days nonstop. So mm -hmm. pieces of oak have come down. So I'm just holding up a big old piece of like kind of thick barked, um, oak branch. This is not what we're going to use for medicine, right? This is this. And even if I were to peel this bark, I don't think we'd find green um, cambrium fresh layers underneath. But if you use the twigs, right, that are nice and have, if you taste them, they have a strong astringent taste, meaning like a lemon, like it'll, it, not that it tastes lemony, but that like a lemon, it will make you pucker when you taste it or dry your mouth a bit. Right. That's what we want to use for our infusions and for our tincture making. Right. And so I, oh, you know what? Uh, also, in my research, I learned something else that I didn't know, um, which is always happening if you're an herbalist, right? Like, seriously, it's always happening. We're learning every millisecond. Um, yeah. I learned that the, so, so the two kind of considered the primary medicinal chemicals in oak are the quercin and the tannins. And what I didn't know before um, doing a little homework for this conversation was that quercin is akin to salicylic acid. Hmm. I did not know that either. Interesting. I so I read that in, um, in again, that was Michael Moore in, in Medicinal Plants of the Mountain West. He wrote that and I was like, really? I had no idea. So that gives us the hint that not only is oak anti-inflammatory in addition to its astringency, but it also is pain relieving. Mm. Ah, very interesting, right? So if there's cramps in the gut, um, if there is... So, so again, going back to my own, hang on, I got, I got too excited. I lost my train of thought. Let me come back. So the twigs we want to gather in either the spring um, or the late fall, right? Spring or the late fall. We don't want to gather them when the acorns are at their height because then that's their children and their best energy is in the children, mm -hmm. right? in the same way that a, a mother's body, you know, takes calcium out of her bones to help, you know, build the new being forming inside her womb. And in this remarkable way that that reality is so magical. Um, so the, the, um, the leaves can be also be gathered in spring and fall. 
And, you know, I had never read anything about using leaves. And I remember when I was a very, very beginning herbalist, like maybe in the early 90s, I remember feeling like they were medicine and not trusting myself to, Mm -hmm. you know, to kind of follow through on that or like maybe trusting it a little bit, but not like necessarily telling anyone. Um, But sure enough, they are also super astringent. And so these days, I think this is the best, um, one of the best, I should say, medicines for hikers to know, mm. right? Because oaks are very, very ubiquitous. They, uh, they're they all over the world. I, I remember, um, did you meet, did you meet Doña Enriqueta Contreras at any of the conferences? Not she- personally, no. So she, she was just, she touched my heart very deeply. And I learned, I learned a lot from her. And I remember her saying that the, um, the oak is the chief standing person Hmm. in Mexico, um, among her people in any event, right in Oaxaca, but the chief standing person. And I would suspect that that would be true throughout a lot of Central and South America, so we have, oak, and we have oaks, like, I, I don't know if there's any part of the world that doesn't have oak. So this is a great first aid leaf to learn because it will help with bug bites and scratches and rashes, and it will stop bleeding and chew it up like plantain. It's not going to be quite as pleasant as chewing up plantain, right? but it does work. And I discovered this for myself, just scratching myself on a blackberry bramble hiking in the woods, you know, behind where I live. And I was like, oh, of course, because I'm looking around for plantain and plantain doesn't typically grow in the middle of the forest. I mean, it may, it may start doing that for us, but it typically doesn't. And I'm like, wait a minute. Oh, astringency, tightening tissue. Hmm. Why don't I try this? And it worked like a charm. Hmm. It worked like a charm. So the one thing I haven't experimented with yet, I, and I don't know why, um, is the oak galls. I know a lot of herbalists talk so highly of the oak galls, which if you don't know, a gall is when a certain kind of wasp will make its nest um, on the leaves. And I think it's on the leaves. It's certainly on the twigs at least, but somewhere on there. And it, it forms like a ball, like a round ball. And those balls are super high in tannin. And they are supposed to be harvested. See, now that I'm admitting this publicly, now I'm going to definitely do it. (laughs) Harvested when they still have some red color to them and they're moist, not when they're really dried and like almost, they're almost papery when they're dried, like almost like a wasp nest, Mm -hmm. right? But we want them when they're more kind of filled with a little juicy bit of life. And that I am told is the highest astringent part (laughs) of the oak tree. All right. But I love the taste of the twigs. I didn't know. Like, so let's go all the way back to the seventies when I get this little bag of powdered white oak bark that I'm like, Hmm, I can lose this loose tooth or I can drink this tea. I think I'm going to have to lose the tooth. I can't get it down. Right. That's how, that's how awful it tasted to me. Right. But what I've learned since then is the bark is pretty good. It (laughs) tastes good in tea. Right. So, yeah. So, so there's some thoughts about it. Right. So it's, but it is the astringency um, that makes it such a valuable medicine for the belly, for the blood vessels. Right. And I'm thinking about this too. Like now I need it for a different reason because the herbs have gotten my mouth into such a healthy place, which was theoretically not possible. Um, Uh, because the level of bone loss was so much. Uh, But, you know, even like just last week, I went to the dentist and they're like, your mouth's so healthy. We don't understand how that can be. Do you want to learn? And you know what, Rosalie, for the first time, they said, yes, we're going to be offering some classes. We're we're moving to a larger office and we're going to offer some classes in natural medicine. Would you do one on mouth care? Wow. Yes. That's awesome. I said, absolutely. Because I was looking at a poster in front of me while I was getting my teeth cleaned. I was looking at a poster that said, you know, after cleaning and rooting and scaling and planing, the bacteria might come back. So why don't you consider like this antibiotic 
to go on it for like regularly. And I said to the dentist, cause he knows me. I said to him, I said, I'm looking at that and it's killing me. <laughs> <laughs> he oh, said, I know, you know, better. wonderful resource. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So they're changing because when I first presented what I was doing to periodontists and dentists, they were like, what, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. what is this? We don't want to, we don't want to know. I was mm -hmm. like, don't you see that my mouth health is different than that of your other patients with similar problems? Like, yeah, we do. Just keep doing what you're doing. No, no, we don't want to know. So this is, you know, time changes. So again, going back to go forward, um, I was thinking about this too, that now I, besides as my uh, spiritual counselor with no time limits or no insurance papers to fill out. Um, besides that wonderful gift of the oak tree, I also, um, I sit a lot. I write a lot. I do things like this a lot, right? And so my legs are showing that. They're showing like more um, broken capillaries in particular. And so I realized, ah, oak is the perfect medicine for that, hmm. right? to drink it and also maybe to create an external wash hmm. with that, both for, you know, for aches. Um, I mean, of course I also hike and I do yoga and this and that, but mm -hmm. it's, it's, I think I need Oak now for that. Hmm. Would you think of Oak as like a bath herb, like something you could actually like soak in for a while? Yeah. 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 And the only caution I would put around that is it might be drying to parts. You don't want dried <laughs> too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is not lacking in astringency for sure. Right, right. So, okay. um, yes, in a in an in another world of baths, the other night I took a bath in milk and violet blossom honey and rose honey. I just want to recommend that to everyone. It was a little slice of heaven on earth. I'll bet. Wow. Yeah, I felt like like, you know, it was like the Cleopatra bath, milk and honey. It was wow. really good. That's yeah. lovely, Robin. Thank you for that. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. And actually also going back in time a little bit to our peach show. Mm -hmm. um, yesterday, I made a peach pit and lavender tincture. Ooh. And already in 24 hours, it tastes really, really good. And Ooh, so that, that sounds and, lovely. Yeah, that'd be kind of something that's good enough. You could serve it at a little party or, a, mm. you know, or you could take it medicinally as a, you know, as a common tip and Mm, that sounds lovely. I did make peach pit tincture this year and I also made lavender glycerite this year. And so now I think I'm going to combine those two. Well, how did you like your, I was really wondering how you were feeling about your peach pit tincture. I really, yeah. really like it. Yes. It was so lovely. Yes. Good. And what did you use? Did you use a, a vodka or brandy or? Brandy for that. Okay. So now your next, your next um, suggested experiment is try it in vodka because it also brings out the flavor of the peach a little differently because it doesn't have any competition like from the brandy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. flavor and it's it's really really great as well all right i love that about herbalism it's never done never, never, <laughs> never done. done well speaking of recipes robin you shared a recipe with oak for us which you're calling oak on the mountain blend what's in this recipe and how do we make it and how do we use it Okay, so I made up this recipe, um, which I also is sort of subtitled Standing Strong Recipe, kind of the spirit of that oak tree or oak trees in general. And it's three ingredients. It's white oak bark. It's Greek mountain tea, um, which is often called Greek mountain tea. It's not usually called anything else, that, but that you'll have the botanical name of it in the write-up I know. And it's, I think it's pronounced, I'm not even sure, but I think it's pronounced Sideritis or Sideritis. I, I don't know, but it's Greek mountain tea. It's, okay. uh, it's an oregano-like flavor, but it only comes from one place in Greek, in Crete and, um, and elder blossoms. So mm -hmm. what I did was I put in equal parts into one quart. I put equal parts of like three quarters cup each of the oak bark and the Greek mountain tea and a half a cup of the elder blossoms. And it's a very deliciously smoky infusion. That's sort of, um, I don't know. It just, yeah, it's, that's the best description I give. It's a little smoky 
And what it does is it strengthens our immune system profoundly. And it also is tightening and toning tissues and make it's kind of like, and this is from the Greek mountain tea also, it's, it's gastroprotective, mm-hmm. antimicrobial, um, works on your overall resilience and it's got antioxidants through the elder as well, anti-inflammatory compounds. And as we said, the astringency. So I steep it for at least one hour before I decant it, but I've played with leaving it like for hours and it's still really, really good. And I gave it to, um, it, I mean, it feels strengthening when you drink it. So I recommend it and I hope people will, will try it. I have gotten a lot of love notes of people who've tried the peach um, peach blends we talked about. So that's well, always- I have to say that created quite a lot of excitement. I think one of the most excitement inducing recipes we've had on the show, honestly, Robin. Wow, thanks. <laughs> oh boy, that's very <laughs> affirming and lovely. I've been processing peaches like crazy because it's the end of the season and, and I only have one peach tree left standing because the bears took them down. Oh no. They took down even this year, most of the branches and most of the peaches. Oh, but I have, it is peach time. I think I finished that. Hence why I was making peach pit tincture and, peach pit <laughs> and, uh, and cooking up. I cooked up the last maybe seven, eight peaches with some, um, let's see, what did I put in some cinnamon mm-hmm. cooked them lightly and they're in the refrigerator for dessert with, they have just some cinnamon and that violet blossom honey I mentioned and Ooh. tahini. Just a Ooh. ton of tahini because I like to mix a little protein with my sugar, mm-hmm. you know, protein and sweet. Anyway, so that came out really good Sounds too. Lovely. Everybody wants to try it. Um, and then going back to the oak on the mountain blend, I had a question. So you're using the oak bark. Um, mm-hmm. do, would you use like cut up twigs? Would that be like, are they in chunks, you know, cut and sifted kind of, or is it powdered but- or... I use, I definitely don't use the powder. The powder, okay. first of all, in the powder, uh, you're going to lose a lot of the property before it even gets into your house, right? But also because it won't, it it makes it taste too, too, too intensely um, tanniny, uh, I think, in my opinion, obviously. But I, um, I use, typically I buy my oak, which is ridiculous considering I live on the edge of an oak forest, but there you go. I have been buying my oak and I buy the cut and sifted okay. and use that. Um, but see, now I've said it publicly. So now I'm absolutely <laughs> going to go and harvest some oak. I've had apprentices who've, who've allied with oak and made beautiful tinctures. Um you know, which again, simpler's method, just hundred proof vodka taking fresh. So what I will do is, is take, and it's not like I've never done it, but it's been a while. So, um, but basically I would treat it like I do most twig medicine. I harvest the really small twigs and either nick the bark, like with a knife or even my fingernail, like every half inch or so Mm -hmm. and dry it and tincture, cut it up and tincture that. Uh, for the tea, I would dry that, right? So you could, if you were harvesting anything larger than say your pinky, Mm -hmm. approximately, right? You could, you would do better to um, peel off the bark, right? And then just Mm -hmm. dry the bark. But I prefer to, you know, also, I don't know about where you are, but here it breaks my heart how many times I have to pull out oak trees because I'm on the edge of the woods, they come into everywhere, the garden, the potted plants. The, and so this way, at least I can use the young, I can use the young plants. Like I, I there's got to be a better way. Like there's got to be a place that's being deforested that these could get to alive enough to plant. I, I dream about things like this. And I figure if I say them, someone else is going to, you know, come up with the ways to make these things happen. Um, I think that's a great use of art, like the platform being, you know, so public is you can say things that you can't figure out how to do yourself and someone else will. Mm -hmm. All right. Where do we put those baby trees? I actually don't have oaks around me. There's um, Ah. 
it's all evergreen, all evergreen. Yeah. Yeah, For the most part, there's one Oak tree in town that's somewhat famous. Um, but you know, it was planted there and, but you know, it's kind of, it's been invited in, but we don't have native Oaks here. Well, how could it not have had babies? Uh, it's on private property. So, Mm -hmm. and it's behind a fence. I haven't really Ah. Got it, you know, super close in that way. You haven't gone late at night and climbed that fence, huh? <laughs> yeah, I have not. <laughs> well, if you call to, if you stand there and you call to that oak, I know that oak will send you some acorns. Hmm. Yeah, but that's that's in, that's almost like impossible for me to imagine. Like, I mean, I obviously I believe you, but that's that's so different. So, how far would you travel to be where there's oaks? Do you even know? Um. I know kind of south of Yakima. So, you know, it's several hours, many hours from here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I actually saw an oak tree at our a plant nursery here and I fell in love with it and really wanted it and was ready to take it home with me. And my husband said, we don't have room for it. So that's really, I just need to open up his mind to there's never not enough room for plants. So it's a, it's a progress. We're, we're going to work on it. I had I have had those conversations with my partner at the time too, and I'm just smiling because that's just so so familiar. Yeah, you <laughs> need that. You need that oak. Everybody needs their oak. Um, it also, yeah, it's just a beautiful energy um, to be around, and it, it makes a wonderful um, gargle too for any kind of inflammation in the mouth, any kind of inflammation in the mouth. Also, it can be, you know, tea prepared or a dilute tincture prepared for a sore throat gargle. It's going to really be um, effective for that. I'm trying to think of uh, other things I like to combine with oak. Well, we'll just stick with the recipe. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that recipe. And for anyone who'd like their own version of that recipe, you can get a beautifully illustrated copy by going to the show notes at herbswithrosaliepodcast.com and you mm. can get that recipe. Well, as we transition from Oak, I'm excited to have you here because we're on the precipice of your next book being published. Mm-hmm. And I'm actually not quite sure when this airs, if it'll have be just about ready to publish or post publishing, but we're right on the precipice, which is always an exciting part uh, to be at when you're the author and, um, you know, publishing your, your next little, your baby, your project. So um, I want to hear all about it. First, it's called a green witch's pocket book of wisdom, big little life tips. Exactly right. And it, as we are in, as people are hearing this, we are in full on pre-launch, um, which means that anyone who buys the book during the pre-launch uh, season, which goes up through October 31, uh, will automatically receive an, a truly beautiful booklet that I created for this purpose that's called Herbal Recipes for Meditation, Dreams, and Deepening Intuition. Oh, just nice. a little enticement. You know, as an author, Rosalie, that that pre-launch period is really, really helpful to an author. Mm-hmm. So any of you who choose to do that, you want the book or you want to support me or both, hopefully. Thank you. Yes. Pre-ordering is very important for for all authors. Well, this is not your first book, as we know. So I'm curious, you know, what inspired you to write this book? because it's no small endeavor to write a book. So what was that, you know, jumped out and said, okay, here's your next book, Robin. And, you know, this is why it's important to have this book now. I wanted to create a pocket book. I wanted to create like a little book of wisdoms that people could take with them anywhere. And that would appeal not only to herbalists, but to, I don't know, anywhere from a struggling angst-filled teenager to, you know, an elder who had lived a long time and wanted reminders of how to be in their heart center or, and really because I had such beautifully wise first spiritual teachers, um, this book is sort of a combination of the original kind of 10 years of work that I did as a very young woman with them 
Um, is it is it only 10 years? Maybe it's more, but I'm not going to try to do math right now. But but it's it's their wisdom combined with the earthy herbal green witch wisdom of plant connection. And I wanted to share these in particular because um, and I'm not a fast writer. I started this book. I mean, we could say I started it a million years ago, right? But it, I rem the first time I remember working on it was probably 2018, um, maybe 2017. I wanted to share practices that have stood the test of time. And then eventually they stood the test of the pandemic challenges um, these are practices that help you um, walk your path with being true to yourself. And again, there these are, I'm not standing on any pedestal. These are the practices that I have engaged in, currently engage in, and will always engage in. Mm. Um, and so I wanted to share them because they've helped me so much. And that was the motivation. Um, mm. And then I wanted to create something beautiful. And I was so lucky because my uh, a local artist friend here uh, where I live in Northern Jersey, um, Gail Stoughton agreed to do the illustrations and she just did a beautiful, beautiful job. So I couldn't be happier. Um, I'm waiting on my review copy now. Uh, I got one, I returned it. And now that one hopefully will be the final. Uh, but I do have a like a manuscript mock-up of it. And as you know, we chose to just have me open to whatever I opened to uh, backstage right before we came on live. And I think this is a good time to share what I opened to. Yeah. Yes, let's do it. Okay. So, um, so what I'm going to do, everyone, is for those of you who can't see uh, this because you're listening, just imagine um, a spiraling tree with roots going down and branches going up. And for the rest of you, you can look at this um, illustration as I read. So each page has like a line of wisdom and then an explanation that follows. So here's the wisdom is trees remind us that we grow down as well as up invisibly as well as visibly. Growth is not always obvious. We grow inside ourselves, not just externally. Tree roots spread under the ground, mirrored by branches that grow up and out to the sky. With time and practice, our inside and outside will come to reflect each other beautifully. Mm. That's beautiful, Robin. Thank you. So again, they're, they're nature connected. There are um, some yes, some not. I, I say it's a little bit of a, oh, and I'll show you the cover. So again, it's not this size. It's a four by six, but just to give you, oh, let me take the plastic off so it doesn't have so much glare. Okay, there's the cover. Mm. And Rosalie, I'll send you a copy as soon as it's ready. Love and you. so, Robin, how do you envision people working with this? It's a pocketbook. It's filled with wisdom. Um, obviously, mm -hmm. there's no one way to do anything. But do you have thoughts on that? Like, how, how will people work with this book? I see a few possibilities, you know, depending upon who the person is and how they like to do, right? But somebody might choose to start at the beginning and read it straight through. Somebody else might, you know, just open here, there. Um, like that. And some people might do what I call, well, it's not what I call, I learned there's a word for this thing I love to do. And what I love to do is just open the book and ask for a message, any book, any book whatsoever. And I learned there's a word for it. It's called bibliomancy. Oh, interesting. Right? It's fun. So I recommend in my introduction that this is a great book for bibliomancy. And people might want to ask for a message, whether it is for this encounter, whether it is for the day, whether it's for autumn equinox to winter solstice, you know, whatever it might be. But even just as, and, and the, the, the truth is that the messages have been uncanny for people. 
-hmm. like and myself. I do it for myself every day. Um, also, I, I just find it helpful. But like, just as an example, I was having people over who were, um, there was like a little mm, disharmony, potential distrust between one of them and me because of a relationship I'd had with her partner. And I really wanted us all to be friends and so forth, right? And so I did ask for a message before they came over. And it was so perfect. And so after we'd hung out for like an hour, you know, and had tea, had our, had our herbal tea magic, um, and things were like kind of feeling good, then I shared with them what I had opened to because I thought if I did it too soon, it'd be kind of weird or threatening or something. But it was it was we were already having like a really nice time. And the message I had opened to in my own book was relax into becoming it, relax into being your authentic self. This will bring ease to everyone around you. Mm. And then there we were. And we all just kind of got these giant smiles and had a beautiful day. I'm glad to say it was so healing for them and lovely and fun for me. Like mm. what a wonderful thing. So I love, I love the bibliomancy thing, but anyway, people want to read it, use it, make it their own. I am thrilled. Mm-hmm. I'm just thrilled for that. And um, I think I just opened to, I just did it. I couldn't resist to open to one more to see what to share. And I think this is one of your favorite plants. I think chamomile, right? And it I, is one of my favorite plants. Yeah. And yeah. it was, and the wisdom is believing is something you do. Knowledge is something you gain. Wisdom is something you have. You might feel pressure to defend a belief you hold dear. Like knowledge, belief implies something external, separate from you. Wisdom, once earned, is inside you. It can't be taken from you. Mm. Oh, I love that. Some wisdom. Thanks. Chamomile in mind. Yeah, chamomile. So it's such a beautiful, such a beautiful um healing plant, relaxing plant, centering plant. Well, Robin, the title of your book is A Green Witch's Pocketbook of Wisdom. And I'm curious, what is a green witch to you? To me, a green witch is an affectionate term for an herbalist. It's really a person who is connected to and works with the magic of nature. Right. And to me, the most magical thing of all is reality. I, I really see that, like the fact that the you put a seed in the earth and, and it grows up and becomes a plant or a tree or or that beings give birth or or, or even that we die and that we shed our form and we go back into all that is. It's just. Reality is, is the utter, utterly most magical thing there is when we, um, when we look at the familiar through curious eyes, right? Through eyes that are open to wonder. And especially for an adult to do that, it's so profound because it's so easy to lose that as we grow older, or as I prefer to say, as we grow elder. <laughs> well, it has a different ring to it to grow elder you know mm -hmm. um but when we can bring that kind of awe or or even to keep it more simple like curiosity wonder um openness to the world around us it is utterly m magical and so beautiful and, and, and as our art eyes open, our hearts open, or maybe as our hearts open, our eyes open in whatever order it happens, this, I, and I've seen this with so many students and I'm sure you have too. Um, we, I, you, we discover the joy again, the joy of being alive. And then we are energized enough 
to stand up for what we believe in and care about and you know want to protect want to see held with respect and safety um, we just had a fantastic success in my town a fracked gas compression station that we have been speaking out against for years now and quote unquote we lost and they went into building and a lot of people said all right that's it it's over and then there were those of us who said, no, it's not, not on our watch. No, 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 no. Well, through whatever wonderful combination of human intervention and spirit and earth and water, they were just blocked mid-construction. Their permit was considered illegal. Their permit has been declared illegal. So it ain't over yet. But theoretically, it was over, and now it's not. Mm -hmm. And all along, I kept thinking, permit denied, project canceled. Permit denied, project canceled. I saw the stamp pad coming down, permit denied. So all of which is to say, if we are, all of which is to say, first of all, like I'm so grateful that this is happening. Uh, secondly, it's to say that the herbs in general, Oak and the others, can help us reclaim our vitality and our energy, not just for our own individual good feeling and health, but also so that we can step up in this time we're in that's so crucial and so evolutionary and do whatever is ours to do. And that is only, you know, what's yours to do, right? There's no right or wrong here you know one person's in the streets one person's in the you know what i mean it's mm -hmm. but we have to have energy to be able to think past our own immediate self and i am super grateful to plant medicine because it brings us that healing and vitality um, that is so needed and then i and then because it helps you fall in love with life you then want to do what's yours to do. It just, I, I've seen it so many times. I know it's not just me or just you. Mm -hmm. It just happens. I, I You watch people like grow more joyful. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the great medicines that the oak shared with me. The oak said, and this is, has become really central to everything I do now. The oak said, Robin, joy is medicine. So true. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's been a big one for me too. We, I think we've, the natural health world has spent a lot of time in fear, you know, based medicine, like fearing yes. yeah. toxins, fearing just whatever to fear out there. Right. And I, I'm a big proponent of the joy based medicine now that, yeah, first and foremost. Yeah. And it doesn't mean we never are afraid. It just means we don't, to feed that yeah right and and yeah yeah so well thank you for sharing that so beautifully robin before you go i have a question i'm asking everybody in season 10 and that okay. question is who have you learned from and because i know i'm asking herbalists i'm saying apart from the plants wow. um yes so who are some teachers that you would like to honor perhaps some ancestors just a time to give thanks yeah. for those of us we've learned from. Yeah, I'm going to say um, some people that I might not have mentioned before. I learned a lot from, and, and I didn't necessarily spend a lot of time with the people I'm mentioning, but I'm grateful for what I received. I learned a lot from Rosita Arvigo. Mm. I learned a lot from Tiarona Clar Lodog. Mm -hmm. I learned... Um, really valuable uh, medicine, physical and other, from Kiwe Dinokwe, mm -hmm. who is an ancestor. Um, I learned a lot from Cascade Anderson Geller, mm -hmm. who is an ancestor. And yeah, those are some people I would like to 
honor. I'm looking at my bookshelf saying, oh. <laughs> of course, there's people I, you know, I'm not, I, I, you can't say everyone. Yeah. Uh, even like, like from a book like DC Jarvis, learning a lot about vinegar from him that became very important. It's a very big medicine in my, in my, um, in my cupboard. Yeah. So, um, yeah, those are a few people I could go on. I think you really want me to. (laughs) Thank you for sharing those names with us and yeah. And honoring those people you've learned from. Yeah. Well, Robin, it's been fabulous to have you back. Fabulous to hear about Oak. I'm wishing you a lot of success with your next book. And I know it's going to bring a lot of joy and wisdom to those who choose to, to work with it and, I'm really excited for the bibliomancy aspect of it. So I'm glad you shared that. But it's really been truly a joy to have you back on the show. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, I appreciate it so much. And I love I love you and the work you're doing. Oh, thanks, Robin. Welcome. Thanks for being here. Don't forget to head over to the show notes at herbswithrosaliepodcast.com to download your beautifully illustrated recipe card and get a transcript of the show. There, you'll also be able to sign up for my weekly newsletter, which is the best way to stay in touch. You can also visit Robin Rose directly at robinrosebennett.com. If you'd like more herbal episodes to come your way, then one of the best ways to support this podcast is by subscribing on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. I deeply believe that this world needs more herbalists and plant-centered folks, and I'm so glad that you're here as part of this herbal community. Also, a big round of thanks to the people all over the world who make this podcast happen week to week. Nicole Paul is the project manager who oversees the whole operation from guest outreach to writing show notes to actually uploading each episode and so many other things I don't even know. She really holds this whole thing together. Francesca is our fabulous video and audio editor. She not only makes listening more pleasant, she also adds beauty to the YouTube videos with plant images and video overlays. Tatiana Rusikova is the botanical illustrator who creates gorgeous plant and recipe illustrations for us. I love them. I know that you do too. Christy edits the recipe cards and then Jenny creates them as well as the thumbnail images for YouTube. Michelle is the tech wizard behind the scenes, and Karen is our student services coordinator and customer support. For those of you who like to read along, Jennifer is who creates the transcripts each week. Xavier, my handsome French husband, is the cameraman and website IT guy. One of the best ways to retain and fully understand something you've just learned is to share it in your own words. With that in mind, I invite you to share your takeaways with me and the entire Herbs with Rosalie community. You can leave comments on my YouTube channel, on the herbswithrosaliepodcast.com show notes page, or simply hit reply to my Wednesday email. I read every comment that comes in, and I'm excited to hear your herbal thoughts about oaks. Okay, you've lasted to the very end of the show, which means you get a gold star and this herbal tidbit. Well, I was recently in Austin, Texas, where I absolutely fell in love with the beautiful live oak trees there. So if you're watching on YouTube, I'm going to share some images of those live oaks while I read a favorite poem of Mary Oliver. And if you're not on YouTube, you'll just have to imagine them. All right, this poem by Mary Oliver is called How I Go to the Woods. Ordinarily, I go to the woods alone with not a single friend for they are all smilers and talkers and therefore unsuitable. I don't really want to be witnessed talking to the catbirds or hugging the old black oak tree. I have my way of praying, as you no doubt have yours. Besides, when I am alone, I can become invisible. I can sit on the top of a dune as motionless as an uprise of weeds until the foxes run by unconcerned. I can hear the almost unhearable sound of the roses singing. If you have ever gone to the woods with me, I must love you very much. 